Marcel Lefebvre did not die excommunicated. Here's why. There are Catholic apologists who for some reason believe it is their sacred duty to sully the name of Marcel Lefebvre for a living. On the one hand, it is difficult to understand, but on the other hand, it is quite simple. These quote-unquote apologists need to prove to everyone, in reality, they need to prove to themselves, that Marcel Lefebvre was not a hero and not a saint in order for their failed Vatican II and Novus Ordo experiment to be taken seriously. You see, Marcel Lefebvre, like all great saints, was a sign of contradiction that separated the wheat of orthodoxy from the modernist chaff. The reason why the neo-modernist apologists of our day can't stand Lefebvre is because they can't stand the truth. The truth is too concrete, it is too categorical, but a modernist needs things to be slippery, like a snake underwater so that nothing can be held onto, and therefore no position needs to be held unshakably. So here we are, we are still debating this tired old topic of excommunication and Marcel Lefebvre. Now before I continue, it should be noted that I don't believe the excommunication of Marcel Lefebvre was valid, which is an opinion shared by men much smarter and holier than me. However, for the sake of understanding, we will consider what an excommunication is and what that meant in Lefebvre's situation. What is an excommunication? According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, excommunication, the principal and severest censure, is a medicinal spiritual penalty that deprives the guilty Christian of all participation in the common blessings of ecclesiastical life. Let's break that down for a second. It is medicinal, which means it is geared towards fixing some error or issue of discipline or conduct. It is not an arbitrary thing. You do not receive the penalty of excommunication for being a meanie or because someone thinks you're a jerk. It deprives the quote-unquote guilty Christian of participation of the sacramental life and ecclesiastical society. For clerics, this means he is forbidden to administer a sacred rite or to exercise an act of spiritual authority, again according to the Catholic Encyclopedia. This means that if someone is truly guilty of something worthy of excommunication, then he cannot receive sacraments or rites of the church, and it means that a cleric could not administer those sacraments or rites. So if someone did have permission or was allowed to receive or administer rites or sacraments, then he would not be excommunicated. In the case of Archbishop Lefebvre, he received a Christian burial and was buried in a Catholic cemetery, which is something that the church tells us is not allowed if someone is truly excommunicated. Now, you might just say to yourself, well, those SSPX renegades just went ahead and did that. There is a problem with that statement, you see, because multiple active bishops came to pay their respects to Archbishop Lefebvre in that Catholic cemetery, which apparently he could not have been buried in if he was in fact excommunicated. There is something else that is interesting about excommunication. If we look again at the Catholic Encyclopedia, it gives a strict definition of the term excommunication. The Latin ex means out of and communio or communicatio means communion. So excommunication means exclusion from the communion or from communion. Huh, that is interesting because that would mean that if you were not excluded from communion or the communion, which is to say the visible unity of the church, which you demonstrate by administering or receiving rites and sacraments, then it couldn't be said that you were out of communion because you are clearly participating in it. Of course, the modernists would say that this just means that the SSPX are in some sort of irregular or partial communion. That sounds like the same sort of argumentation that the Supreme Court of 1973 used when it found the shades of penumbra of the Constitution in order to make abortion legal. I guess people can find anything in imaginary shadows if their mind is cloudy. Let's consider the specifics of the accusation that Marcel Lefebvre was excommunicated. Well, we must be more precise. You see, the actual claim is that he quote-unquote incurred the penalty of excommunication. To incur means to bring something on yourself by your own behavior. This is because the type of excommunication associated with Marcel Lefebvre is what is called a late sententia excommunication, which is a Latin term that means by the act itself, which just means a penalty that someone incurs from their behavior. There are many such excommunications and how they are resolved depends on the penalty. Some can be resolved in the confessional, others can't. There is another sort of excommunication called ferende sententiae, which means someone who is excommunicated directly by a legitimate authority for a particular reason that is not covered under Leite Sententia excommunications. If anyone says that Marcel Lefebvre was personally excommunicated by the Pope, then he is telling a lie, or he is ignorant of what happened, or maybe both. Either way, his opinion is irrelevant. 
Also, anyone who says that Marcel Lefebvre would have remained excommunicated after death is also out to lunch. This is because Laete Sententia excommunications necessarily end at death. Why is that? Well, as the Catholic Encyclopedia states, as the baptized cease at death to belong to the church militant, the dead cannot be excommunicated. It's actually pretty simple once you think about it. If an excommunication is medicinal in order to bring somebody back into communion, well, this serves no purpose after they die. Now, it is true that there are stipulations for the public lifting of excommunications after a person dies, when it is necessary. The reason why someone would have their excommunication lifted after death, according to the Catholic Encyclopedia, is for absolutions that concern only the effects of excommunication, notably ecclesiastical burial. This means that the person would have their excommunication lifted in order to have a Christian burial. Again, Lefebvre had a Christian burial, and multiple bishops came to pray at his tomb. The location of his tomb would technically have been desecrated if he was truly excommunicated and buried there. One of those men was Cardinal Odi, who came to pray at Lefebvre's tomb within a short time after his death. It would be strange if a cardinal of the Catholic Church visited the SSPX seminary to pray at the desecrated ground where an excommunicated bishop was buried. Well, it isn't strange at all, because as we said, even if Lefebvre was excommunicated validly, which I don't believe he was, the type of excommunication that was leveled ends at death. Anyone who tells you that Lefebvre is somehow excommunicated in perpetuity is off base, and I am not sure why they can't understand something so simple. It would be nice if for once the anti-traditionalist neo-modernists could simply follow church teaching. In my next video on the subject, we will go over why Lefebvre wasn't even excommunicated in the first place.